Governance Review Committee Chair of ISACA, and that might sound like a fancy name, but it really isn't. All it, it, it means is that I've been asked to help ISACA kind of manage the process of understanding exactly who we are, what we're able to do, and whether or not our internal processes allow us to get the best out of what we want, which is the ultimate goal of having a better product on the field and being able to be a functional, properly run organization. Nothing more, nothing less. And by the way, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge Mr. Tim Anderson, who most of you probably don't know, is with the ICC, who lives in Dubai, but who has committed to this process because from several years ago, he identified the opportunity for us as a, um, a <coughs> excuse me, as a country and a cricket playing nation to experience some successes and decided to throw the weight of the ICC behind our efforts. So Tim, thank you very much. First of all, thank you for being here because Tim himself will tell you that it is probably very rare that he speaks to anybody other than the president of any organization in the, country, in the world. So the fact that he's here with us right now, I think is a very, very significant effort on his part. So A, thank you, and B, all of your support all of the years has been absolutely recognized and appreciated. Thank you. And so as Darren said, we will probably in a while take the league presidents or whoever else is at that level back to kind of flesh out the details I would suspect that probably most of the people in the world don't want to know the quick and dirty behind all those issues that we'll be talking about. But all I'd like for you all to take from our conversation tonight is the fact that we're doing everything that we can do to make sure that cricket remains and becomes a sport for every single American who wants to participate in it. That means white Americans, it means Indian Americans, Pakistani Americans, black Americans, anybody. It does not matter what you look like. If you, look in, if you live in this country, deserve the opportunity to partake in the second most popular sport in the world, and that is my aim. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mir, for your tremendous generosity, and thank you for all of you for welcoming us the way that you have, and I look forward to talking to you all soon. Thanks. Basically what I'll do just for five minutes then, ladies and gentlemen, is I'll quickly talk to these slides here. So maybe you can go to the second one again. Go to the next one. Okay. What this governance review committee, or what this governance review is about, is that since 1968, most people may not be aware, but USAC has been in existence. What that block is there on? USAC has been in existence since 1968. And since 1968, you have, through volunteerism and great dedication and great uh, passion, you now have today the official figures of 54 leagues and 32,000 people playing the game. Since I've been here, we've done some more research. Most figures are wrong. We actually think the number of leagues in the US is closer to 78. And we think the number of people playing could be as high as 60,000. Now, that has all been done on the back of volunteers, passion and enthusiasm. Now, some people here tonight run businesses. And you'll know what I'm about to talk about. Sooner or later, we're going to reach a tipping point because people like me, A, don't grow on trees, and B, they get tired. Life happens. Things happen. You lose your job. Someone in your family gets sick. You get a chance to go overseas. Those things happen. The fear is, ladies and gentlemen, that with, with Mia, when he goes, so does the league, so does the club. And you might be lucky here in Bolingbrook because you might have a structure that's going to be here in 100 years' time. Unfortunately, if that's the case, Mayor, you're the exception. Because I can tell you without a doubt that there are leagues, clubs, and associations throughout America that when the key person goes, they will go. So what does that tell you? It tells you it's time for the regions to get a hand from the national body. And after all, that's what we're here for. The national body is not here to dictate terms to you. You clearly know what you're doing. You're clearly running a wonderful program. The question is, how can we put our shovel to the wheel and help you? And my sense is, and you tell me if I'm wrong, my sense is 
that these four things here are what you're missing out on. Would it be fair to say that you could do with some more financial resources or you got plenty? My feeling is you probably need some more money. My sense is you could probably do with some people that are actually paid. Imagine if you had a development officer. So some young American who goes into schools, elementary schools, middle schools, and teaches our kids to play the game. Not give them a taste of the game, play the game. Six week program, eight week program, that then has that young boy or that young girl playing on a weekend. Okay? What about the standard of playing facilities? We've been to some states where the nets don't exist. You know the nets where we all learn how to play cricket? Don't have them. Play on roll, mud and matting when they can get out there. Then you go to Houston where, or from Texas where um, Brian's from, and you have fantastic facilities, quite the opposite. They have fields everywhere and they have, so their, their issues are different. You go to San Diego, they had eight teams two years ago, they've now got 14, but because they don't have a relationship with the local government, can't expand. These are real issues. And you know what? They're bigger than what a volunteer can handle. Because it means sitting down with the City of LA, which we did two days ago, and trying to work through some of those issues. And finally, tell me if I'm wrong here, but I reckon that we think that there is as many as 10 million people in this country that love cricket. But I'll bet you if you went out and asked those 10 million people, tell me who the captain of the US national team is, they wouldn't even know we had a national team, much less who the captain is. Would that be fair? So these are real issues, ladies and gentlemen, that we're dealing with. So what, what the board did was they, bought, they went out and did a, a request for an independent company to produce a report, a company called TSE Consulting out of Indianapolis. And they, they produced this report. Now, if you're interested, at usaka.org, the report is there. It's a public document. And in that document, it has 10 recommendations. And the recommendations talk about the governance of this sport for the next 20 to 50 years. Now we can get the report and we can tear it up. We don't have to stick to it sometimes. Reports like that that tell us what we don't like. Or we can actually understand that this is a point in time. If you want to go to the last slide, please. This is a unique point in time. I think I lost the guy back. Thank you. 2013 is a unique point in time for us to come together. The focus of this review is not about me sitting in Florida telling you here in Chicago how to run cricket. It's not about that. It's about helping you with those two things that you need. How do we help you get more financial resources and how do we help you get more physical resources, people on the ground? And so that's what USARCUS focuses on over the next three to five years. The process about this whole governance review, if I had to boil it down, is that. How do we ensure our, resource, our regions have the resources they need? So the first thing we need to do in the Central East region is we need to reform you as quickly as we can. We need the Central East region working and back in place as quickly as we can. So ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, that's what the governance review is all about. I want to say this to you. Ladies and gentlemen, there is passion and there is enthusiasm. But you know what? It'll get you only so far. Sooner or later, you need to have a very clear vision. Our vision is to make cricket a sport for all Americans, as Brian said. And sitting behind that is a strategy. That strategy is also online, and it has six different pillars. Those pillars are pretty basic. Get more kids playing the game, have a time to play pathway so young Barbara from here knows how to get to the national team. Look at our facilities, okay? Make sure we've got access to, to those facilities. We need to make sure that we market the game so that people sit here and don't, don't, don't understand what cricket is. And we need to also work together as to how we're going to sustain the game. USARCA at the moment is a very small charitable organisation that has virtually no money.